Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Michael Cruz Show. I'm your host, Carter Nutter, and with me today is the head coach of the Maslin Tigers, Michael Cruz. We want to thank our sponsor, Reliable Heating and Cooling. Coach, your Tigers are now 11-9 after his past Tuesday night's 83-76 win at home against Whitney Young at Cleveland. Your team had to overcome a slow second quarter, but was able to fight back. Tell us more. Yeah, we, uh, we started the first, I would say, quarter and a half of the game about as bad as we could play. Uh, spotted them a 16-point lead, but was definitely pleased with our kids' resolve and to continue to fight back. We were able to get it down to five going into halftime, um, get the lead pretty early in the third quarter. Uh, but like we told them, when you give a team like that confidence and, and, and the belief that they can win that game, we knew we were going to be in fight for four quarters. So uh, not pleased with the overall performance, but certainly happy to get the win. Last Friday night, the Tigers lost a low-scoring game at Warren Harding. In the second half, the team had a difficult time scoring. What happened there? You know, that's been something that we've dealt with all year. Um, that was a little bit extreme in terms of the, the, the level of low scoring that that game was, you know, 39-33 especially because both teams were pushing the basketball. It wasn't like teams were trying to take the air out of the ball. But, you know, we just go through these moments um, where sometimes it's a quarter, sometimes it's a half a quarter, where we just really struggle to score the basketball. Um, we're still trying to find our identity offensively and, and get five guys on the floor that can consistently score for us. They're a very good defensive team, and they're one of the best teams that we've played this year. I um, think they're going to make a nice run in their district. Um, you know, certainly uh, happy that we competed and, and had a great chance to win. But like we told our guys, you know, uh, moral victories are, are, are no longer acceptable. You know, we're, we're very close to March, and you've got to win those types of games. You've used quite a few different starting lineups throughout the season. Is that by design or necessity? Uh, by both, I would say. Uh, we, we tell our guys you earn what you get in practice every day. So just because you're a starter game one or you're one of our five more talented players doesn't necessarily mean um, that you're going to be guaranteed to start throughout the duration of the year. Uh, also, uh, you know, it, it's been a little bit of who we're playing and what we're trying to, to accomplish either on the offensive or defensive side of the floor to start the game. And, you know, we, we were missing half of our team, more than half of our varsity roster uh, until December. So we're still um, trying to figure some things out, uh, being a month behind everybody else. And we've had some injuries as well that's, that's made it difficult for us to get that right uh, group um, to start the game. But we feel like we're getting closer to it, and, uh, and hopefully we can settle in on something pretty soon. All coaches are eager to have a strong bench, especially heading into the tournament. How has your team's bench developed? Uh, well, it's changed almost every game because, as you mentioned, you know, who's starting has changed quite a bit. Um, you know, we've played about 11 guys this year um, at some point, meaningful varsity minutes, uh, which is a lot. So I do think we have, you know, quite a few players capable of being quality varsity players for us, either as a starter or a rotational player. Uh, with that being said, uh, we're really right now as the tournament's going, trying to get it down to eight, uh, nine at the most. And, uh, you know, we, we're, we're still figuring that out and, and, again, trying to figure out what combinations work best. But uh, I feel pretty good about our bench. Um, we would just like a little more consistency out of him. We'll talk more with Coach Cruz and meet a Tiger player in a moment. But first, this word from Reliable Heating and Cooling. Everything that goes into a Linux system is engineered for absolute comfort. Like the parts that create your perfect temperature and humidity. Or the parts that purify the air. Together, all these parts save you up to half of your heating and cooling bills. And there are few things more comforting than that. The future of home comfort is here now at Reliable Heating and Cooling. Get the latest innovation and technology at Reliable. Linux. Innovation never felt so good. Thanks to Reliable Heating and Cooling. And welcome back to the Michael Cruz Show. The Tiger player joining us this week is Nick Liebler. Nick, your team is coming off a nice home win over Whitme Young last Tuesday night. How did you feel after the win? Um, I felt great. I mean, even though uh, we didn't play so good in the first half, but we, you know, played really good in the second half and then we came out with the dub, so. What do you see as your role on this year's team? See me uh, coming off the bench, uh, giving a lot of energy, um, and just attacking the glass. How do you prepare yourself mentally before each game? Um, I uh, listen to music, you know, just thinking over the plays and uh, not messing around, really, just getting game prep. On a personal level, what are your strengths and weaknesses as a player? 
Uh, my strengths are uh, attacking the glass, rebounding, boxing out. And my weaknesses are uh, being uh, too out of hand on defense and committing you know, dumb fouls. Who was your favorite college or NBA player growing up, and why him? For sure, LeBron. He's a great role model, a great re leader on and off the court. I just have always looked up to him. Thanks, Nick. Coach, tell us more about Nick, both on and off the court. Uh, well, Nick's a freshman, and uh, he started the year playing freshman basketball for us. Um, you know, we when the year started, we knew um, you know we have a very deep freshman class, and we knew Nick was near the top of that. Um, but honestly, we expected him to be you know by the middle of the season a JV only player, and, and hopefully a JV starter, um, and then maybe practice a little bit of varsity. And um, when we called Nick up, I think it was after the Lake game to start practicing with us. Um, this kid just took full advantage of it. Uh, you know, obviously he mentioned that, that, that we ask him to do a lot of the dirty work, you know, playing defense, rebounding, but, uh, but Nick's also a very capable scorer, and that's something that we need uh, because, as we mentioned, um, you know, we don't have a lot of guys right now that are consistently scoring, and we feel like he's one of the guys on our team coming off of our bench um, that can put the ball in the basket, you know, not only finishing around the basket, but also, you know, he hit one of the biggest shots of the game yesterday. Uh, you know, we're down three, and he hits a corner three, so uh, we feel like he can really play inside out he's very versatile he can play guard position as well as bigs even though he's not the tallest um, he plays very strong and physical and uh, I'm really excited to coach him. Maslin will play their last two regular season games in the coming days first up this Saturday the Tigers are home to face St. Ignatius tell us more about the Wildcats. <clears throat> I mean, as always, they're one of the premier uh, programs, not only in Northeast Ohio, but the entire state of Ohio. Um, they're very good as usual. I believe they, they earned the two seed in their district. Um, you know, St. Ed's got the one this year. Uh, but they're gonna be a tremendous challenge. And uh, if they were in our district, I believe they'd probably be the one seed. So um, this is a great challenge for us as we're getting ready for that tournament run. Um, this is a Jackson type opponent, a Lake type opponent, a team from Canton type opponent. So, um, you know, we know we have a lot of work to do and certainly can't start the way that he uh, alluded to earlier, uh, you know, being in such a, a, a deficit to start the game. But uh, they're going to be a tremendous challenge, but it's also a great opportunity for us to get better and uh, prove we can win those types of games. Next Tuesday night, the Tigers finished a regular season on the road at Cleveland Benedictine. How about a scouting report on the Bengals? Uh, well, much like Ignatius, they're one of the better programs in the area and in the state. Um, I believe they got the four seed this year, which I was very surprised by, uh, but they play in one of the toughest districts this year. So uh, they've had a tremendous season. Um, they, they've had some great wins, and uh, it's going to be another great test for us. And, and just like I said with Ignatius, I believe if Benedictine were in our district, they'd be a one or a two seed. So um, I don't know that there are many teams, if any, in the entire state that finish with hard, as hard of a schedule as we do. Uh, we obviously had one of the hardest schedules in the state um, throughout the course of the year, but uh, you know this was by design. You know, at this point, we've got to be playing well enough to not just compete with these types of teams, but beat them if we want to make the run that we want to make and cut down those nets at the Civic Center. The Canton District Tournament pairings and schedule was released last weekend. Tell us more about the seedings and who your Tigers will face in the first game and beyond. Yeah, so we were uh, you know fortunate to get the five seed. Um, it was actually the same seed that we got last year. I thought that was the seed that we deserved, um, but you just never know, obviously, how it's going to shake out. So we were pleased that it, that it worked out the way that we thought it should. Uh, so we'll be at home on Wednesday, February 28th at 7 p.m. versus Youngstown East. Uh, Youngstown East is the 12th seed in our district, uh, but they're a very dangerous 12th seed. Uh, they, they beat Warren Harding by 20-plus uh, points earlier in the year. Um, they've beat a couple other really, really good teams. They've been really up and down, but when they're playing well, they're extremely tough to beat. Um, so we know we're going to have our work cut out for us. If we're fortunate to win that game, we would play the winner of Wooster Boardman, um, and Wooster is the favorite in that as the four seed. Uh, if we played Boardman, we'd be at home, but if we played Wooster, we would be there. Um, and for those Tiger fans that remember, that's who we played and beat last year in the sectional championship to get to the Civic Center. So uh, we certainly hope we get that opportunity again, but we know we got to beat Youngstown East first. And then obviously beyond that, you know, you've got uh, most likely Jackson, team from Canton, uh, Lake, uh, are probably going to be those teams that, that you would see um, in, in the Civic Center. So it's going to be a tremendous challenge for us, but we, we like our positioning. Thanks, Coach. 
As we wrap up another edition of the Michael Cruz Show, we want to thank Reliable Heating and Cooling for sponsoring our program. And thanks to Coach Cruz and Nick Liebler for joining us. I'm your host, Carter Nutter. Thanks for watching, and as always, Go Tigers! Hello, welcome to Tiger Paws. Today we're at Washington High School and we're going to highlight one of our career tech programs, Construction Trades, which is under the direction of Von Moeller. So hey, how about going inside? Well, we've made it into Von Moeller's uh, paradise here. It's his uh, Construction Trades office. Behind us here we have a, um, um, a shed that the group of kids is working on and I know that they've sold a few of those over the years and actually we have this one for sale so if you have any interest make sure you contact Vaughn or Washington High School and then we can make sure that you get that in your possession. But uh, there are lots of great things going on in this program and, and this is one of them and around this uh, office area there's different projects that kids are working on but we also have like, a major project, it's an outdoor project for the first time that we've, that we've ever had and um, so we're building a pavilion outside. We don't have a name for it yet, but it's going to be a pavilion so that our kids can work inside and outside and get a broad experience. So at this point we're going to turn it over to Vaughn and you can certainly let us know what great things are going on. My name is Mr. Moeller. I graduated from Washington High School in 1996 and this is my third year teaching the Construction Trades program. My favorite part about teaching at Maslin is um, the relationships I get to build with the students. Um, not only in the classroom and in the shop, but outside of school too, and, and helping them progress as far as um, finding them jobs, um, getting them to be responsible for their actions and themselves as far as attendance and showing up on time. Um, those things are the most rewarding. Here in construction, uh, when the students join, uh, if they join as a sophomore, they're going to learn the basics. They're going to learn how to read a tape measure, use the hand tools, um, use some, some smaller power tools. As they progress, uh, become juniors and seniors, they start to build a shed. Um, this year we're currently building an outdoor pavilion um, that's going to house our outdoor workspace so the kids can work outside, um, not get rained on, not get snowed on. Um, they'll just have to bundle up a little bit because it might be chilly some days. Currently we're working on the, the outdoor pavilion, which is our outdoor workspace. Um, it's something that the students can work on with us through the whole year. Um, they get to see other contractors come in that are assisting us. Um, they also get to do step by step from start to finish of a project that you know goes from footers and foundation to setting the trusses, to putting the roof on it, to the finished product, and it's something they can be proud of when it's finished. I joined cosmetology because I've always loved coloring hair and different colors and makeup. I joined media because I've always had a passion for all things related to media. I've always had a passion for teaching other people, especially topics that I'm interested in. I want to pursue a career as an orthopedic surgeon. And so when I saw that we had this class, I immediately circled it on my schedule and was excited to join.
This class has made me better because it made me very responsible. I like the relationships that I've developed in this class. The girls that are in here with me, I've really grown close with all of them. I joined this class because I enjoy helping others and I want to make a difference. Even like just making something and having people go, wow, that's really interesting. It means the world. It was just a really good environment to be in. It was real hands-on and it was just something I really wanted to do. I joined the construction trades to gain experience in the job I want in the future. Everything that this class has taught me will account for my career in the future. Before I came to this class, I was unemployed and Ms. Markley helped me get a job. I'm going to use what I learned in manufacturing in order to better decide my career. It gave me more knowledge on cars and gave me plans to go in the auto industry. Maslin CTE works for me. 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 Works for me. For me. For me. For me. Maslin CTE works for me. For me.